Good morning. <clears throat> See how many people do we have here so far? All right, we've got eight people already. Great. We'll, uh, we'll get started when a few more people uh, show up. Hi, Kima. Hi there. Hi, Kima. Hi there. Okay, got a couple things to talk about. Um, <clears throat> but uh, let's see. Okay, we've got 18 people. Maybe, maybe we'll just wait a little bit longer. Morning, Mr. Shipman. Okay, 20 people. Let's just wait for just a couple more folks uh, before we jump right into this. Um, we're going to talk about uh, well, what's what's written here: functions and versus relations. And we may also talk a little bit about. Um, oh, I should change this color. Uh, how about this? Yeah, nice light blue. Uh, we'll also talk about one, two, one functions as well. Okay, so we're going to talk about these three things. Um, ba -da -ba -da. Yeah, so uh, those are the, the three things we're going to talk about today in terms of um, mathematics and, uh, and the math that we're going to be talking about today. But um, we are also going to talk a little bit about the project. And I also want to talk a little bit about uh, your new assignment which I posted yesterday so uh, we'll just wait for a few more folks to show up looks like we're at oh 23 okay let's say that 25 will be the magic number okay once 25 people are here then I'll I'll jump right on into it this class is very good for actually showing up not all of my classes get this attendance so way to go grade nines you guys are awesome you're doing a really good job Okay, so do, 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 
do classwork grade nine advanced digital assignment number three aha Oh, okay, I think we can we can start talking now. Okay, so I posted a new assignment uh, on the website. Um, the assignment this time is is uh, quite a bit shorter than your last assignment. The last assignment was um, I think ten questions. This assignment is five questions. So um, so I'm giving you uh, just a week to do it. So it, it is due on Friday. Um, I think it's uh, I think that's a reasonable amount of time. That's one question per day. If you started today. Uh, and then uh, yeah, you can do one question today. The, the very first question um, shouldn't take too, too long, I don't think. Uh, it's kind of pretty much all set up for you. Uh, I mean, honestly, you could probably do this whole assignment, well, the first four questions in an hour or so. Um, but uh, I think the, the last question will require a little bit of problem solving. Um, it, it sort of combines a lot of different topics at once. I was thinking about your guys' project and how you can try to combine topics and try to draw connections between topics. And I was thinking about that and, and I thought that I would just try it myself just to see if, if I could make a question that requires many different topics. So I did that and you can you can see that that question It's question number five. Um, so if that's something that you wanted to do for your project is to like the, the connection that you make between the different topics is an actual question like a, a, a math problem that's totally fine I think that would be a, a perfectly valid way of drawing connections to these topics is that you can say hey look this one question requires all of these different topics to work with each other right that would be a, a perfectly valid connection so um, so yeah, that could be absolutely a um, like a starting point for your project is to say, okay, you know what? Here is here's a math problem. It requires um, these different topics, and these this is how these different topics um, apply to each other or, or or work with each other. So uh, so yeah, that's your assignment. I still would like to talk a little bit about your project. Um, I have. <sighs> I have more announcements about your project. Um, I know that I made a, a very big announcement last week. So I'm just going to close the window. There's a lot of beeping. I guess it's, uh, uh, I think it's garbage day, so there's a lot of garbage trucks um, beeping around and, and backing up and, and being noisy, so uh, you can still kind of hear it, but anyway, um, <clears throat> so uh, yeah, last week I made a, a very uh, big announcement to, uh, or about the project, so um, I'm, I'm basically going to sort of make a little diagram of, of what happened. So. Um, this is kind of what happened. So we had um, a, final, a final exam, final exam, right? We had this as an option, or we had the project, right? That was the original, original plan, right? So, and I, what I should say is I should, I should call this um, uh, final, final project. Okay, so we had these two things, right? And then what we what we what we said was, okay. Um, so we had a final final exam and a final project, and and this was part of our final assessment. Okay, so this is this is basically what happened. So uh, in case in case you missed it, so for the final assessment of the year. Uh, I wanted to provide two options, a final exam and a final project, 
late last week, um, it came out that we are not to do any uh, traditional final exams. That was that was the the message that I received. There was no there were to be no traditional final exams. So that means that this was no longer an option. Uh, on Friday, uh, I learned something new um, <clears throat> that. Uh, in addition to not being final exams, there are to be no final assessments either. Yeah, so that's news. Um, so what that means is that the nature of our final project needs to change. Again, right? So, um, so we are going to change the final project today. Um, so first of all, we are not going to use the word final. Okay, it's just going to be a project. Okay, so uh, the changes are the following. And I will post uh, yet another uh, uh, little uh, blurb about this on Google Classroom so we can all stay up to date with this and, and have a nice little record. It's n not just going to be the video, but I really wanted me to this to come from me in terms of um, a, a video and me actually talking to you uh, as opposed to me just making a post on Google Classroom. I, I wanted your, your first uh, uh, impression of this to, to come from, from, from me and my face and my voice. Um, so the changes are the following. Um, so it is uh, uh, no longer worth um, 30%. So it's no longer worth 30% of your grade, right? Because that, that's what uh, uh, the final exam was going to be worth, was 30% of your grade. So it is no longer worth 30%. Um, I'm, I'm, we are not allowed to, uh, to make uh, one single thing worth 30%. Uh, instead, uh, it will be worth uh, worth the same as an assignment. Okay, so it's just going to be worth the same as, as, as an assignment, just like those five questions that I posted. It's got the same weight. It will change your grade the same amount as just one assignment. Now, you might be saying, whoa, whoa hold on, Mr. Bennett, that's that's not fair, right? Because it's still the same amount of work, right? Uh, it's the same project, but now it's it's smaller. So, in order to to make it fair, so that uh, you don't have a uh, a ginormous amount of work that's not worth very much of your grade, um, uh, what we're going to do is um, uh, make the uh, the the project smaller so it will no longer need four topics and instead just two okay so um so you no longer need four topics we not top his topics uh you no longer need four topics you just need two topics so just find any two topics from the year um and, uh, and, and write about how those two topics are connected. And you can still do the same thing that I was talking about before with you just find an interesting math problem and, and talk about how uh, there are two topics that, that um, uh, work together to solve it. Or maybe you could solve the, this one, one math problem using two different topics. Um, that would be totally fine as well. Um, but I just want the, the, it to be narrowed down. Uh, quite a bit. So, so you don't have to do four topics. You have to just do two. Um, and the the topic map, the topic map. Um, <clears throat> I still want us to do the topic map. Uh, is uh, but it's now going to be a separate assignment. It is is a separate assignment. Oops. Yeah, so topic map will be a, a separate assignment. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about the topic map in just a second. So the topic map. Um, so, uh, so a lot of students are asking about um, the, the topic map, and 
um, what we can do, like if, if, if Mr. Bennett can, can uh, release a, um, how much is an assignment worth? Um, well, uh, I'd have to look into it. It depends on how many assignments we have uh, throughout the year and um, how much your uh, grade from last term affects uh, this, this new year. So um, yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, so the topic map is, oh sorry, not a separate assignment. Um, it's part of the assignment. Sorry, uh, I'm giving you wrong information. Sorry, it's, it, it's, it, so we were going to have a assignment that will be the project and the topic map combined. I'm, I'm, I don't know where that came from. I'm sorry. The topic map is the same assignment, so it's just one one assignment. Ugh, I'm really sorry that I, I, I get it. I, I know that there's been a lot of information that's just been going back and forth, and, and, I, and I really apologize about that. Um, it's just that, that things are changing throughout the year, so it's, it's not like I'm changing my mind. It's just that new information is being given out. Um, it, it seems like everyone, including myself, we're all kind of running by the, the seat of our pants. We're, we're kind of just making it up as, as we go along. So uh, I'm just trying to make sure that, that I'm not breaking any rules, and that's, that's where these changes are coming from so I, I really apologize if it's if it's becoming stressful uh, that the the the, the uh, that everything is changing as as we progress through the year um, so I want to talk a little bit about the topic map um, so I will be releasing a list of topics uh, very shortly um, so uh, this isn't uh, uh, you know it's not like going to be like um, exhaustive it's not like it's going to cover every tiny little thing that we did otherwise it would be like you know 40 pages long especially if I included what what um, Mr. McIntosh and Ms. Bray did with you um, but the topic map uh, so basically what I, I want you to be doing is is just to take several topics I think I said 10 topics and they don't have to be like super big topics they can be something small just like a you know something like uh, what we do today, like a, a, what a function is, what a relation is, um, that kind of thing. And then just, just make some connections between some of the topics. It doesn't have to be exhaustive, um, but I, I just want you to choose 10, 10 small topics um, that uh, um, have, have some connections. So uh, I will release, release, I can't spell today, uh, a list of our topics from the year uh, and I, I just so choose 10 of those and uh, show how they are related Right, and and we we've talked about the, the topic map already, but I guess the the, the main news is that um, the topic map will, uh, or the, the, that I will uh, release a list of, of the topics that that uh, that we've covered uh, and that you've covered with with Mr. Uh, McIntosh and, and Miss Bray as well. Okay, are there any questions about that? I know that that's that's kind of a lot of information, and uh, again, I know that that it's another change. Um, I, I have to say, I, I don't, I mean, change is good, but I don't like this kind of change. I know that, I know that it, it has a tendency to be stressful when you're in the middle of working on a project and then the expectations of the project have changed, and I'm sorry about that. At least, at the very least, hopefully this takes some pressure off. That's kind of what I'm, I'm hoping is, is at least a positive, is that uh, there is some pressure that, that is, is now you know, maybe relieved a little bit. Um, that uh, that pressure being, of course, uh, okay, Ms. Williams. Yes, yeah. Um, so that's correct. So the so so in in the chat we have a comment. So we ha we have to do the topic list of ten topics and connections, and then do a project where we find two topics and write about how they are connected. Yes. Uh, it's, it may sound like the topic map is a lot of work. Uh, I, it, it does not need to be like uh, a lot of work, right? Like, 
I'm, I'm, I'm thinking something like, okay, so you talk about the Pythagorean theorem. I, I already gave that example. How about a new example? So how about, how about functions, relations, and uh, how about uh, linear equations and systems? Systems of equations. So here, here's four topics, right? Here's four topics. Uh, so functions and relations. So these uh, these are related. So because uh, some relations are functions, right? And then um, linear equations. Well, linear equations. Are functions right uh, okay here's another one uh, linear equations and systems of equations um, so there are linear equations in systems okay um, you know and, and that though that's a lot of connections you could probably draw a lot more connections um, like uh, yeah, like a linear, here we go, a linear equation. A linear equation is a relation, right? I'm not, I'm not talking about, about like, you know, doing a deep dive into each one of these topics. Um, just to, to demonstrate that you can see that we've covered a lot of ground here, but there are connections between these. Um, so that's going to be uh, your your last assignment is to um, to do a topic map with these ten topics. Um, talk about uh, the connections between them, and it, it just it needs to be brief, very brief. Um, yeah, like one or two sentences, uh, even preferably one sentence uh, to talk about how the the topics are connected. Um, and if you want. It'd be, it'd be kind of nice as well, but not necessary. You might want to give a brief description of what each topic is. Right system of equations is where you have uh, many equations, many variables to solve. Right? You don't, you don't even have to do this, but I, I think it would be really good for you to do that anyways. Uh, I think it would really help your, your learning and uh, uh, really helps solidify all the, the stuff that we've, we've done throughout the year. Um, so, you know, a relation would be uh, like a set of ordered pairs, ordered pairs, right, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, so that's really all I'm expecting for the topic map. It does not have to be like super extensive. It does not need to be, like you should be able to fit it on one page with some white space with some some arrows you know drawn in between the topics it does not have to be super intense um, and then the the project yes yeah, so the, the project can be anything um, so just to give you an idea about like the length of the project I'm expecting the same amount of work as I would with a regular assignment which is a few hours of work so um, so I'm, I'm not expecting you know, uh, like like a five-page essay or something. Like, let's say, um, so for the the, the top or for the, the sorry the, the project. Here, let me try that again. Project. So for the project, the amount of work that I'm expecting is um, approximately one page of written work. So that's if you were doing a uh, like like kind of like a paper, right? Is is it would be like one page of, of written work. Um, like may, like maybe two, but uh, but but I mean, yeah, one I I would say one like if you're going to do like uh, a written a written uh, assignment, then I would I would say that the amount of work should be about one page. So if you're doing something else, like if you wanted to do a video, um, I would expect maybe like a four minute video, um, right? Like not, not terribly long. Um, so, so yeah, just th think about, think about it in terms of like one page of written work. My expectations are now being greatly reduced. So this is, this is no longer like a final exam. This is no longer like a big final assessment. 
uh, it is now just um, Google Slides. Absolutely, yeah, you can absolutely do Google Slides. Yeah, that would that would be totally fine. Um, if you're gonna do Google Slides, um, I mean, the thing about Google Slides is it's hard it's hard to tell you how many slides to use um, because you know, you might put a lot of information on some slides, you might not put any information on other slides. Do you have a title page? Do you have, you know what I mean? So, so just think about it in terms of like one page of work. So if you just took all the text from all of your slides and then pasted them into, um, into uh, like Google Docs instead of Google Slides, uh, is it about one page, right? Just so, so think about it, think about it in terms of that. And it's not like I'm gonna say, oh yeah, this is like 70% of one page, you get 70%. I'm just saying that that's, that's the amount of work that I'm expecting. So, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that this takes some pressure off, like I say. Um, so I mean, the, 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 the pros are definitely that this is going to be less work, um, that this hopefully should take uh, some pressure off. Um, because you know, I think that it is true that that a lot of us are feeling a lot of pressure right now, um, and that's that's not good and, and extra stress that we don't need. And then um, I guess the cons are that this is changing and it's another change, and uh, I, I I feel terrible if you've already started this project and you, you're already sort of past the point where you found two topics and you've been making connections. Um, I'd be surprised if there were many of you who are in that in that um, situation, but I, I I wouldn't be surprised if there's one or two of you who have who have actually got there. Um, so if if you are in that situation, I'm I'm sorry that that uh, um, you've spent more time on this than you needed to. Um, but uh, I'm I'm hoping that you're able to narrow it down without too much work. Um, and if if you have sort of passed the point of, of the amount of work that I've uh, done, then just think of it like, well, you're pretty much already done. You just kind of have to wrap up what you started, um, and then and then hand that in. So um, yeah, like I say, I'm I'm hoping that this isn't too much of an inconvenience for everyone, um, and I'm I'm sorry for for having to change this so often. It's just that the the message that I've been receiving has been changing. So that's why I'm changing it. I'm not changing it because I'm I've, I have second thoughts or that I don't want to do something anymore. I'm changing it because the message has been been changed. Uh, as for the due date, the due date is still the same. So uh, so it'll still be I think what is it June twelfth I, I believe yeah June twelfth. So um, so yeah that's uh, that's how the cookie crumbles. Um, so uh, yeah. Let me know if you have any grievances. Um, I just I just hope that you can understand that uh, that that I, I'm just trying to do what uh, what I can do and what what you know in my professional opinion is is what's right in terms of you know how can I make sure that my students are learning the most and I really think that that doing this project even if it's just two different topics and, and writing and, and exploring the the connections between two different topics I really think that's a, a really good way of understanding mathematics is to, to think about how different topics are related um, because because that's I mean that's that's what it's all about right um, that's that's why we're studying math is because math is not just a whole bunch of separate ideas it's one big idea with with different ways of looking at it and that's that's really important to understand so um, oh and uh, goose came just to say hello say hi goose hi. There she is. Hey, sweetie pie. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's uh, that's what we're doing uh, coming up. Uh, so yeah, we are going to now start talking about uh, functions and relations. Uh, the difference between those two words. Um, can you just let me know in the chat, really quick? Have you guys uh, have you guys done anything with with uh, functions and relations? I, I think that you've done just a little bit, um, but uh, uh, would you just let me know in the chat, like if 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 you're totally uh, good on functions and relations, or or if, if maybe we should talk about it? Because I, I am planning on talking about it today, because I think that there's some stuff in here that you certainly haven't covered yet. But um, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe you've seen it a little bit. Um, I guess we're we're quiet in the chat, so I'm just gonna assume that that we haven't uh, haven't really done very much of it at all. Okay, so um, so we talked a little bit about 
um, functions the other day. Um, we talked about domain and range. Um, we talked about uh, ordered pairs um, and that kind of thing. So, so yeah, we, we, we talked a little bit about relations. We, we talked about the way of, of writing notations. We could have uh, a table of values. Um, we could have a domain and a range. Uh, and then uh, you can also graph um, relations. And, and like I said, we, we had a lot of experience with that. So, so that's what we, we kind of talked about a little bit um, uh, on what was it Thursday I think so what I want to talk about now is I, I really want to focus on this mapping notation because this mapping notation really um, describes the difference between functions and relations very well so we're going to we're going to talk about um, this um, hey Chris, what you doing over here um, we're going to talk about um, uh, the difference between functions and relations today, and we're going to sort of, uh, f you know, frame it around this uh, these mapping diagrams. So, what is the difference? So, what is the difference between a function and a relation? Okay. So fact, the first fact is that uh, some relations are functions and all functions are relations. Okay? So that's that's pretty much it. So um, so really, over here, if I have uh, two sets here, um, and I've got I've got a few objects in each of these sets, so these kind of look like chocolate chip cookies. Okay, so I've got a few objects in e each set. I'm going to call this um, set A, and this is set B. Um, in a relation, and let's do yellow. In a relation. There are no restrictions. Okay, so that means that I can make a connection between this guy, these guys over here, right? Um, and what I mean by no restriction, who's no? Don't do that. Uh, what I mean by no restrictions is that um, you might think at this point, well, this graph is, or sorry, this this relation is kind of saturated right like it's it's already filled up all of these guys have somewhere to go um, but well I guess not all of these guys have somewhere to go this guy doesn't doesn't have anywhere to go but the the point is that with a relation I can actually say okay well actually I want this guy to go here as well okay and I also want want this guy to go here as well so the idea with a relation is that all we're asking ourselves is is which elements in A, like, okay, so here's an element in A, which elements in B is this related to? Well, it's related to this one and this one, okay? Same with, with like this guy over here, okay? So here's a set, uh, here's here's a guy in A. Uh, which which elements in B is, is this one related to? Well, this one and this one, okay? So, Hi, Goosey. So that's what a relation is. A function, a function is a little bit different. Um, so, so each element in A must be used and maps to exactly one element in B. Okay, where A here, A is the domain and B is the range. Okay, so um, each element in A must be used and maps to exactly one element in B. 
Um, so we can kind of think of, of this as, again, input and output. Goose, okay, hi, sweetie. Okay, so that's that's the main difference. So what does that look like in terms of a mapping diagram? Well, let's let's take a let's take a quick peek. And Goose is going to help out. She's just lying right on my iPad, and now it's not working. Hi, sweetie. Yeah. Okay. Um, so here's a nice little mapping diagram. Here's our set A. Here's our set B. We got some chocolate chips. In here, so these are my my guys in in A. These are my guys in B. And the, one of the important things to notice is that it doesn't actually matter how many is in each each of these sets. So I'm purposely going to to have um, more in A than in B because it doesn't really matter. So with with A, um, I can choose. So here's here's one of my guys in A, right? I'm going to just choose exactly one. And then I'm going to put an arrow here, right? Because I, I like to sort of have a direction with these things. So in this case, we're, we're done with this, with this element. We cannot choose this element anymore because it, it cannot map to anything else, right? It can only map to one thing, right? So that's why I really like this mapping um, notation is because it makes it very clear that we're done with A. A cannot go to more than one element in B. Okay, so uh, let's do another one. Okay, so this one over, over here, we're done. Okay, we're done with that one. We're done with that one. And you might say, uh oh, well, we can't we can't have like, we're like, we're, we're done in here. Right? Well, that's not actually true. So the, the important thing to understand is that with functions, with functions, um, the only thing that matters is our domain. We're only, only concerned with our domain. What happens in the range doesn't really matter in our function. Um, all we're really concerned about is what's happening in the domain. So as long as each of the elements in the domain only goes to one, one guy in the range, it doesn't really matter what's happening in the range. So this is a perfectly valid function because all of the elements in A are used and all of the elements in A are used exactly once, right? So they're used exactly once. So that's what a, a function is, okay? Now there's one more term, one more term that I'd like to talk about, which is a one, two, one function, okay? That's our one to one function. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about next. Okay, so this is um, a certain type of function. So it's a type of function. So that means that every one-to-one -one function is a function and therefore a relation, right? But not all relations are functions and not all functions are one-to-one. -one. So we kind of have this sort of... Uh, um, sort of inclusive relationship. So I've got relations, I've got functions, and then I've got one, two, one functions, okay? So it's kind of like uh, a set of babushka dolls, right? So in the world of relations, like these are what all relations could look like, right? So you could have some relations that are not functions, right? You could have a relation which is a function but is not one-to-one. -one. Or you could have a one-to-one -one function. That one-to-one -one function is, of course, a function and a relation, right? So that's, that's kind of how these things work. So let's talk about what a one-to-one -one function actually is. I mean, that's actually pretty important. So, um, so it's a type of function. Um, so because it's a function, so each element in the domain is used exactly once, okay? And also each element in the range is used exactly once. Okay, 
there, there you go. That's that's the main main difference. So this guy right over here, this one that we watched over here, this is not a one to one function because uh, you could think of it almost like a one to two function because we've got um, like all of these guys are used exactly once, but here this one is, is used actually twice, right? Because we have two guys mapping to it. So that would not be a one-to-one -one function. Let's make a, a diagram of a one-to-one -one function. So using our mapping diagram. So here's our set A, here's our set B, and we've got some chocolate chips. Okay, here's my chocolate chips. So in a one-to-one -one function, we have this kind of thing here. So it's a, it's a really nice and clean uh, type of function because uh, you know that each one of these guys is going to be used exactly once. Each one of these guys is going to be used exactly once. Okay. Um, now, what about that situation? Um, in this case, um, well, let's let's just let's just think about this for a second. What is the range? What is the range? Oops. Okay. What is the range of this function? Right? That's what you really have to ask yourself. So, the range of the function is all the guys here that have been used. Oops. Not including this guy. So this guy's not in the range. So let's let's write that down. Um, goose. Okay. Not in the range. Right. The range is the set of values that you're actually mapping to. So um, in this case, the range is not equal to b. Right. This is the range. The range is the set of values that you actually mapped to. So in this case, this is this is this is still one to one, even if we have an extra guy out here that's not used. Okay, um, so that's that's the main difference here is that um, uh, a one to one function. It doesn't really matter if you use all of the elements in your in your output set. Um, which which we actually have a special name for. It's called the codomain, um, but we don't really have to worry too much about that today um, or even this year. But yeah, so the, the important thing to understand is that we're just not mapping to the same value more than once. Okay, so it doesn't matter if you use all of the elements in your domain. Um, if you do, sorry, or in in in, in your in your uh, sort of your codomain here, if you do use all of them, then we have a special name for that as well, which is called a bijection. So a bijection is a certain type of one-to-one uh, -one function, and that one-to-one -one function um, is, uh, is where you use everything in your sort of output set. So um, I know that there was kind of a lot of information. We didn't really do any sort of real examples, um, but we'll do some more on Thursday. Uh, or sorry, not, no, not Thursday, on Wednesday. So, um, so yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna end it there. Um, oh, I guess I have one more announcement um, that um, this week is the last week that I will be streaming from home. So uh, we have, I guess after today's class, we have two classes where Goose will be um, my teacher's assistant. Um, she's retiring from the teaching profession. Um, I'll be streaming at school now because uh, as far as I understand, uh, teachers are now to work at school as of June 1st. So I will be at school on June 1st. Um, there may be a change to our streaming schedule, but I don't think I'll need to do that um, because I already only see you guys once every second day. So there will be a, there will certainly be a change to the streaming schedule for my other classes, which I see um, every day, but I, I, I can no longer stream every single day now, uh, because I need to leave some time to have meetings with students. Um, so there'll be more information about that to come, but I just thought I'd give you a heads up that, um, 
we only have two more classes where uh, where I'll be at home. So I'll still continue to, to stream, uh, but it'll be in a different uh, setting. The last day of school is June 19th. Yeah, the, the last day of school is June 19th. Um, yeah. So if you have any questions or concerns about uh, about what I talked to th about today, I know that it's a lot of information, um, a lot of changes, and again, I'm really sorry about that. But if you have any any questions about that, then then just send me an email or or any kind of message uh, on any of the many platforms that we have, and I'll I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's that. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'll talk to you guys on Wednesday. Have a good rest of your day. Bye bye.